Chili Rasboras are to die for. Once they color up, which at the story, they probably aren't. The B-roll you're seeing right now, they are so red. I mean, that's why they're called Chili Red. They stay real small, which is awesome. They can live in a school in a five gallon. Feeding them's a little bit of a, a challenge. You need little, you know, crushing up flake or frozen baby brine, something like that. And they really look good in a planted tank too. They don't have to be, but they really, that red really pops off that green and you know, it's one of my favorite five gallon fish for sure. Celestial Pearl Danios, crazy popular, also known as Galaxy Rasboras. As they color up, they look amazing. They get the orange on the fins. They got like the little star patterns on them. They eat small foods. They're totally peaceful. They can mesh with a bunch of other stuff. They can be a little bit shy, so give them plenty of hidey holes, you know, whether it's plants or rock decoration, something in there so they, they feel safer. They don't like super duper bright light, so if you can dim that down, you get to see them a little more. Great fish, pretty easy to keep alive too. So great for a little five gallon uh, desktop or something like that. Coolie loaches are a great kind of bottom dweller for a five gallon tank. They can go in the nooks and crannies. They don't take up the midwater space that you might be having a flashier fish. They'll eat all the crumbs off the ground. They just do a good job in general. They'll live in plant roots. They'll go in between rocks. You know, you might get two or three of these things. You can get them in, they come in black. They come in uh, the normal stripe pattern. They come in a, a rare silver pattern. Any of them are pretty darn cool. And, but they're nocturnal, so you don't get to see them a whole lot during the day, which means they're on duty cleaning up at night, kind of like a Roomba. Go ahead and feel free to call it a Roomba. Get yourself those, you know, they're usually five, six, seven bucks, not too bad. You don't have to buy a whole big school of them. And they don't really add a ton to your bio load. You'll feed them and they'll eat some of the food. They'll come out during feeding time. They're really gonna get all the stuff that your midwater stuff misses. It's a cleaner fish is what it is, but you get the added beauty of it. So get some coolie loaches. They're super cool. Plus someone you you know someone will see it and be like, oh my gosh, are those snakes? Yeah, they're they're cool. Green neon tetras are for the person that wants that cardinal tetra or that neon tetra look, that big school in a small package. The green neons, they stay smaller. They have a real vibrant green color, especially if you're gonna look down. If you're walking around, you look down on a desk or you look down low. Green neon tetras, not the easiest to find, but they tend to be pretty cheap. Just a normal tetra, easy to feed, nothing too crazy about them. Uh, just find yourself some, get a school of six or so, and I think you'll really like it. Now, green on green, there's a little bit on the, you know, the plants, if you got plants, but if you're not looking at that angle, they're more of a blue than they are green. But at that angle, it's like a laser green. Hard to show on camera for sure. We put them in the bottom at our store so people go, wow, that really is green down there. But at an eye level, not so much green, more of a blue. A mono shrimp, I know, not really a fish, but they're great as well. They eat algae. They, they get a little bit big, which is nice. They don't really add a whole lot to the bio load. They're mostly a scavenger and a cleaner, which is good. They're big enough that a lot of these nano fish don't really harass them that much. And plus you get a different element to it. And, and they're easy to find. And most people that have these smaller tanks, they'll end up getting an invertebrate, whether it's cherry shrimp or a mono shrimp. I like the a mono shrimp. They get a little bigger and are more robust and more hardy. Plus, you can get away with just getting two or three of them. It's it's kind of a, a great thing to have in a small tank, for sure. The bigger you go, the more options you get. This is a great option for that five gallon. So maybe you're looking for that one fish, and it's not a betta, right? What's that one fish I could keep in there? I recommend a honey grommy. Super colorful, kind of like a betta, doesn't have the long flowy fins. They typically are more peaceful as well, so you can keep them with some of these other fish, which is great. But you get that color that you're really looking for, that centerpiece in a five gallon, which is tough to do, but it's a one solo fish. So go get yourself a, you know, a boy, because it'll be nice and flashy. You'll love it. I, I promise you, you'll love a honey grommy. Pygmy Corydoras are super fun because they're a schooling, bottom dwelling fish that, uh, you know, usually are under five bucks a piece. You get six of them. I know it's 30 bucks, but they're kind of a cleaner. They will eat. They'll be out and about during the day, which is nice. Uh, they just have small mouths. Like a lot of the stuff's going to live in a five gallon. So make sure they're getting 
crushed up flake foods or small pellets or uh, frozen, smaller frozen foods, any of those, they'll do wonders. And I don't know, corridors, if you haven't kept them yet, are amazing. Sometimes you get to see them wink at you. They, give, they do that move, which is super cool. But in general, they're just little, you know, they're just little, they're like little dogs running around your aquarium, really. And there's live bear. That's one that you can get a little into trouble with if you really start breeding them. You can do just males, keep all the flashy ones, that works. But it's a live bear that only gets, you know, that big. The females get a little larger. They'll give birth to live young. That can kind of be a problem if you don't ever bring them back to the pet store. Or you don't have somebody in there like a betta or a honey grommy or a dwarf frog or something that's going to snack on some of those babies. Which, that's not for everybody, but population control is a thing and a nature... You know, in general, we have way too many babies so that uh, when that kind of stuff does happen, we still replace ourselves. And so uh, Endler is great fish, very hardy, can tolerate wide temperatures, a lot of different little varieties on them, too. They're not picky and they'll eat almost anything. So they're, they're real easy. Like, get some, you'll love it. While talking about dwarf frogs, they're also another great option for a smaller tank. They love meteor foods though, which that makes it a little bit weird because all the other stuff, like small little stuff, this needs like frozen blood worms or live black worms or meteor pellets that are gonna be down at the bottom. And they, they're real clumsy. They just kind of throw stuff at their face to eat it. But they're fun. You know, maybe you just get one as an addition to something and you, okay, it's, I gotta feed it. And you gotta treat it like it's its own pet. You can't, he's not, you know, he or she dwarf frog is not a cleaner. It's, you gotta feed it as a dedicated pet. Uh, they like to be able to, you know, stick their nose up out of the water and that kind of stuff. So if you've got some bigger plants up there or some, or some wood, all of that will help uh, have success and enjoy your little frog. Clown killifish are super cool, also known as the rocket killifish. They got a million different colors on them. They look super cool if they're the boys, kind of a theme running here. But they stay at the top of the water, and this is the only one that really stays at the top, which allows you to have kind of some bottom dwellers, some mid-level fish, and some top dwelling. Now, you, you have to have a lid. They will sail right out of there the first night if you don't. So make sure you got a tight lid, lots of small foods. Get yourself a group, you know, a boy to two girls, or, you know, at least one boy for every girl. Doesn't hurt to have four to six of them. Under $10, not easy to find, but a great fish. Pretty easy to breed too. I hope I didn't pop too hard on that uh, pygmy, pygmy, pygmy corridors. Just let me know if it does, Jimmy. That way I can adjust for future filmings. I don't wanna have to get a pop filter, but if I have to, with pygmy corridors, I will. Make sure you check out this video right here, 12 tank mates or your cherry shrimp. Anything that lives with cherry shrimp can also live with these guys. So, you know, it's basically like another 12 options. Check it out.